Hi there. So this is Kathy Cowan Becker um, with Westland Area Commission. And I'm sorry I can't be at the meeting tonight. I have a major fundraiser for my nonprofit, Simply Living, but I wanted to record a video for you all about issue seven because that is on the ballot and I am on the no on issue seven team through my membership with the Ohio Sierra Club. So to talk about that, I'm going to also compare it to issue one that we just passed um, last year in Columbus. Um, so as you know, issue one is the Clean Energy Columbus campaign. It, it set up the Clean Energy Columbus program. Um, that is electric aggregation for 100% renewable energy. Um, we, there's only nine states with aggregation and Ohio is one. It allows cities to obtain bulk purchase rates for energy. About 400 cities in Ohio are doing this, um, but only about a handful for 100% renewable of which Columbus is one. So part of the aggregation contract is that it has to be 100% renewable. It has to be sourced from local wind and solar projects. Um, we'll re use renewable energy certificates at first, but we are working on building out local projects such as the one on the old landfill that you can see here. Um, that, that was a landfill in Franklin County and then a golf course, and now it's going to be a big solar farm. It's going to create 50 megawatts of energy for this program. And the city is looking for 700 megawatts overall. That's going to create a lot of jobs. I believe about 4,500 jobs um, around the state and, and mostly in central Ohio. Um, it's going to generate $1.7 million in grants for low-income neighborhoods in Columbus that will be used for energy efficiency, workforce development, and they're going to set up a green bank. And um, this was passed by Columbus voters in 2020 for 70 by 76 percent. So. Now let's look at issue seven and, and compare and contrast. So issue seven, what would it do? It would take $87 million per year from our city budget, which is about 11% of total taxes. This is taxpayer money. Um, the issue says that it will use this money to create three $10 million, what it's calling clean energy funds and a $57 million clean energy partnership. Um, but no one knows exactly where this clean energy is going to come from. None of that is clear. Um, this partnership is managed by a representative appointed by the ballot initiative committee. And I'll get to more on that in a minute. It will distribute subsidies to help people pay for electric consumers. That's what it says it will do via application. There's no details about this application. And maybe most importantly, it does not say how much of the funding can be used for administrative costs. Out of this 87 million, they could pay themselves 86 million, and that would be totally legal if this passes. So the history of issue seven is that this group, Pro Energy LLC, um, has ties to another group that tried to put a similar initiative on the statewide ballot in 2012, and that failed. At that time, it was for 13 million. And then they've made multiple attempts to get it on the city ballot. Um, every time they up the ante, um, I think the last time it was something like 63 million, now it's 87 million, didn't make it on the ballot until now. They sent out paid petitioners who gathered signatures. Um, the city tried to deny it on a technicality, and um, they had the money to take that to Ohio Supreme Court, which ruled that the de denial was improper and ordered the city to put it on the ballot. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of questions with issue seven. Um, first is who will control these funds? Um, that's decided by the ballot initiative committee. And there's six people named on that committee. Um, the dispatcher did a pretty good article about this that you can look up if you haven't already. Um, they tried to find these six people and they could only find five of them. I'm sorry, they could only find one of them. They couldn't find five of them. One of them is dead and, the, and four of them they couldn't find at all. And then they found a fifth out of state. Um, which Columbus City programs would lose funding. So $87 million taken out of the taxpayer budget will affect the city budget. And right now, and we're also working on, with the city on its climate action plan. That's going to require funding for things like Link Us and the Urban Forestry Master Plan, EV charging stations, electric buses, microgrids, sidewalks, bike lanes, all the sustainability funding um, and programs that we need in Columbus to become more sustainable and raise our quality of life. We need that money here, not sent to some murky group. Um, do the proponents of issue seven know anything about clean energy? Well, there's nothing in the initiative about where this supposed clean energy would come from. 
Um, and the one committee member that dispatch found said about this, we pollute too much, which I'm not disputing that, but this person knew nothing about clean energy. Um, and what is the administrative fee? We don't know. There's no oversight or transparency. And their front man, a guy named John Clark, has been indicted by the FBI on four felony counts of campaign finance violations related to this campaign. So the track record here is not good. So just a brief comparison um, on clean energy. Issue one specifies 700 megawatts, and we are already starting to build it out. Um, issue seven, it's name only. Um, in terms of equity, issue one uh, generates community grants for our low-income neighborhoods. Issue seven requires an application, and there's nothing in there about how applications would be judged or how much money would be sent out. And accountability, um, Clean Energy Columbus is part of our city climate action plan, which is due to be released, um, the final version of it, in a couple of weeks. Um, in terms of issue seven, this ballot committee decides, and most of them are nowhere to be found. So there are a lot of endorsements so far on the no on issue seven of which Sierra Club Ohio, um, the group I'm part of in this campaign and the environmental, Ohio Environmental Council are ones, but also several unions, um, the NAACP and Urban League, the Franklin County Democratic Party, the Building Trades, the Chamber of Commerce. It's a very wide variety of no endorsements on this issue. So you can find out more at the website, voteknoissue7.com. There's also a Facebook page, Our Clean Energy Future. Um, if you want to canvas about this, they have canvases every Saturday at 10 and Sunday at 1. There's literature available. There is a one-page flyer. Um, the campaign is having conference calls every Friday morning. And the person to contact is lindsay at remingtonroadgroup.com. All right. Thank you so much.